Hello and welcome to this edition of the Zone video. I'm the Grigster, still, believe it or not, amazingly enough. And this week, Fortnite, I'm taking you through a couple of Sydney Elites games. Uh, the manager, Leon, actually changes his formation every now and again, so I thought I'd just focus on those two. Uh, this is the formation he used against Mason up on screen right now. You will see I've just highlighted the 3 2 defense, which is pretty standard defense. Uh, it's particularly strong against Mason's attack, which is going to be a 1 2 attack with an attacking midfielder slash center forward, two strikers. It's going to be free, and against a 3 2 defense, it just doesn't work really. Uh, something interesting in the formation is I've highlighted number 4, that's Oliver Philly. Now he's positioned off center, which is a pretty typical position because the if you position a guy right in the middle, it's pretty well known that uh you'll get a lot of interceptions of goal kicks. So just probably about there would be ideal to maximize interceptions. But he's got them. He's still in a position to get rack up a few. Uh, Blue Dean actually played a man right in the middle who would have got most of the balls off the goal kicks. But as a result of that, positioning your central midfielder deeper, and along with his partner Arthur Fazy, he's got going to have a lot of options in attack. Two midfielders are more than enough to support the three strikers, even though Blue Dean is going to play a four man defense. I actually asked Leon what. He, why he played the free man attack and he thought that he felt that the weakness of Mason's midfield or formation was the lack of defensive midfielder type players so two midfielders are sufficient to give enough support to the free strikers which to an extent he felt would have counteracted the fact that four man defense is highly effective against free strikers uh, in the end, one of the goals you could discount due to uh, was a set piece, but the other goal was through the middle, exposing Mason's lack of defensive midfielders. So here's the flat back four for Mason, and for most of the game they nullified their free man attack. Uh, Sydney were most dangerous when the midfielders got the ball, because as I'll highlight now, I think, yep, the two defensive midfielders there, Paul Goldsmith and Rudolf Forrest are just too far up the field and they're also probably too wide as well to have much of an effect so this was very well exploited by Leon with his formation and it was pretty much the key to the game because Mason's attack was pretty pretty much nullified by the 3-2 defense I mentioned earlier of the elites and the one created goal of the game came from through the midfield so there's this space just in there we've got a uh, parallelogram I think that is called and there's that space is what was exploited by Leon's formation up top I'll just show you the 1-2 attack that Mason employed generally pretty ineffective. They did get, I think they ended up with a similar amount of shots though, but Sydney still won the game 2-0 as you would expect, being able to keep a clean sheet with a compact defence against a compact central attack. Uh, you'll also notice number 5, Randall Coots is in the interception position as you would expect. Anyway, first goal we have, actually I'm just going to demonstrate, I think, here the space that the midfielders have. So we've got two defensive midfielders just highlighted there, and there's an awful lot of space. Here's your parallelogram from earlier, again. Your parallel or whatever. Uh, so you've got Oliver Philly, who's just inside the parallel, the, the shape that I've just done and highlighted there, that will be Arthur Fazy on the right of screen and Oliver Philly on the left 
and basically what's going to happen for a large parts of the game, those two players, Sydney, would look most dangerous when they got the ball. So here's an attack. See, Drew Convine this time drops into the space. Sure, the, a couple of the midfielders got across, but not enough. Here's just the four-man defense working wonders against the three-man attack. The primary reason for this is that it takes a player so long to take the ball down after he's controlled it. So there was the first wing attack. This is uh, about 10 minutes into the game. You will see another wing attack here that's shut down by the midfield, by the defender, I should say, the wing defender. And then I think we see another one here, which will be the third attack down the wing. Again, shut down by the wing defender. And that was pretty consistent all the way through. And we've got, well, that was a missed shot in the end, if you're wondering. Anyway, here is, I'm pretty sure this is the goal. So we've got Oliver Philly. As you can see, this defensive midfielder has just lost the ball just off to the right of Philly. And so we have, there's actually a defender behind the Sydney Elites attacker of there, I think. So that would be the four-man defense, but you've got a lot of trouble as soon as, I mean, for Mason, they've lost the ball, they don't have much. It's this big, I wonder if I can do that a bit better. It's this big, massive space. Oh, well, look, we've got a rectangle this time. It's much better than a parallel or whatever. Parallelogram. Uh, so yeah, Philly basically has all the space in the world to run into. He will run up, draw one of the two defenders on the striker. So let's say he runs uh, the central striker, Drew Convine, will just go off to the right. And there's the left striker there, Dante Skittrell, will just hold his position, as will Damian Norton. The Mason defense then has to react with, I believe that will be Bendixel. Bendixon Opal Opdal Bendixu Opdal What kind of name is that? And Erwin Dobbing on the right will be left one on one with Drew Convine and it, what we see is a very nice pass through and goal. The only created goal of the game. The other one goal was a set piece if you're wondering. As I mentioned earlier. Okay, so here is Sydney Elites versus the Gunners. We see a change formation for the Elites. They've got a slightly different three man attack this time. This will be going up against a three man defense, so it should be pretty effective. Although the lack of a another striker, number nine in. It's on the right. Dante Skittrell probably should be a bit deeper. And I would probably push Drew Convine, who's still slightly off center, the central striker, a little bit more central. But you will also notice he's got a 4 2 defense, but the two defensive midfielders are probably too, too far up the ground, as are the two wing defenders, are way too up the ground in Bryce Korf and Daniel Johnston. And, I mean, Gunners score six goals in this game, and most of their attacks are down the wings, and the midfielders, I mean, sorry, the defenders, they're kind of in no man's land against the Gunners. I'll show you their formation in a minute. Uh, but, just too deep, really. And that's the three midfielders. They're all in a position to get an inception off goal kick. Uh, number 10, Damian Norton, barely touched the ball all game, and that proved to be a real weak point of formation. I asked Leon about that, and he agreed with me, basically. Uh, he was trying to find a way to maximize uh, number 10's possession, who was the only support player for the three strikers, really. I think he had about three passes the whole game. Anyway, here's the Gunners' formation. As you can see, it's even more skewed attack. You've got the right striker in Randall Fraser just there to run amok, really, because the wing defenders, as I mentioned before, they're too well. They're positioned too attackingly to cover. Uh, what was his name? Fraser, and not attacking enough to cover the man I just circled there, Brooke Bridson on left midfield. 
So, as a result, Gunners score six goals in this game. Complete route, 6-2 in the end. Uh, they've only got a 3-2. They've got the Christmas tree formation there. 3-2-1 uh, defense. And just to highlight it, it's as if the formation, the defense, are, all the defenders have lined up as if to remind the strikers that the goal is that way, as you can see kind of an arrow. I was trying to draw a Christmas tree actually, but it looks like an arrow. <laughs> so just reminding the strikers which way to kick the ball I guess. Uh, he does also have number 13, Russell Sparrow right in the middle, that's goalkeeper interception position that I was talking about earlier. I'll only show the one goal from this game because they're all pretty similar and as you can imagine the two that we have just highlighted, Bridgson and Fraser not covered by any of the defensive players for the elites. Here we go. Okay, so Duggan's got the ball. He's passed to Castre in the middle. It's another problem with the formation was that there was a lack of central players. Anyway, that's it.